So, you wanna know all about macros, but don't know where to start? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin, and today we're going to learn all about macros. What they are, where they come from, and how to use them to eat more in line with your physique and health goals. Macros are everywhere in nutrition these days. You've got the, if it fits your macros diet, you've got macro friendly recipes, and you've got macro splits, which by the way, are pretty useless practically, and I'll get around to explaining why in another video. The word macro is short for macronutrients. Macro comes from the Greek word for large, and this is because macronutrients are nutrients that we get in large amounts, like amounts that we can measure in grams. On the other hand, we have micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, which we get in very small amounts, like milligrams and even micrograms. There are four main macronutrients or macros, protein, fats, carbs, and alcohol. And a well-balanced diet will generally have a mix of the first three, with the alcohol being optional. All the macros are very different from each other in terms of their properties, but each macro is actually made up of a pretty diverse group of related but different molecules. First, let's talk about the basic properties of each of the main macronutrients. We'll start with everybody's favorite macro, protein. The word protein derives from the Greek word protos, which means of prime importance. And that has a lot to do with protein's essential role in a whole host of processes in your body. In terms of calories, one gram of protein provides four calories of energy. Proteins are actually made of long chains of smaller molecules called amino acids. The word amino comes from the fact that all amino acids contain an amine group, which contains nitrogen, with protein being the only macronutrient that contains nitrogen. There are 22 amino acids in human nutrition nine of which are considered essential because they cannot be formed in the human body and therefore we have to get them from our food. The human body needs amino acids in specific ratios. In the body, protein is necessary for growth and repair of various tissues. Honestly, your whole body is just made of protein in different forms because it's used to form your skin, your hair, your bone, ligaments and tendons, and of course, your muscle. In this sense, protein has an incredibly important structural function. On top of that, protein is essential for the formation of enzymes, hormones, antibodies, and other signaling chemicals in your body. In fact, all of them are proteins with very specific chemical functions. Our bodies are actually very complex protein-based machines. That's how important protein is. In reality, all whole foods have some protein in them, but the amount of protein can vary hugely. For example, 100 grams of lean steak can have about 25 grams of protein, whereas 100 grams of broccoli has only about three grams of protein. The amount of calories that comes with different sources of protein can also vary hugely too. One of the highest quality proteins available is milk protein, which includes whey and casein. They're considered high quality because of their content of essential amino acids, especially leucine, as well as their very easy digestion. Other excellent sources of animal protein include eggs, fish and lean meats, and great sources of plant protein include tofu and textured vegetable protein made from soybeans, corn, which is made from mycoprotein derived from a type of fungus, and legumes like beans, peas, and lentils. You can also get some protein from grains like wheat, oats, and barley, and pseudograins like quinoa, and nuts and seeds, but they tend to come with far more calories than other sources that I've already mentioned. So they probably shouldn't be the main sources of protein in most people's diet. In terms of how much protein you should eat, that depends on your goals. But as a general rule, aiming for a minimum of 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is probably a good place to start. If you're trying to build more muscle, more protein can help with muscle growth. And from 1.6 to 2.4 grams of protein or more per kilogram of body weight per day can be useful. Next up are fats or lipids. With one gram of fat providing nine calories of energy, fat is the most energy dense of the macronutrients. That means that a small amount of fat can provide the same amount of energy as a much larger quantity of protein or carbohydrate. For clarification, both fats and oils are lipids and have the same caloric value. Fats are simply lipids that are solid at room temperature, for example, butter, and oils are lipids that are liquid at room temperature, for example, olive oil. For this video, I'm just gonna call them all fats. Fats are made up of chains of carbon atoms called fatty acids. Three fatty acids, chemically joined to a molecule of glycerol, form a lipid molecule, hence the other name for fats, triglycerides. 
Fatty acids vary a lot in length and in the number of double bonds that they contain, and this alters the properties of the fats as well. Saturated fatty acids generally come from animal sources, like the fat in and on red meat, and in dairy foods and eggs. But they come from plant sources too, like coconut and palm oils, which are actually solid below a certain temperature. Unsaturated fatty acids can be found in foods such as olive oil, avocados, almonds, and other tree nuts, sunflower seeds, peanuts, and most common vegetable oils, flax seeds, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, and oily fish. Fats have a lot of different functions in human nutrition. They form the membranes around every cell in our body, so they have a structural role. They're concentrated energy sources, which means they act as a very efficient form of energy storage, otherwise known as body fat. And they help us to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. And essential fatty acids play important roles in the immune system and inflammatory responses, where the balance of omega-3, omega-6 is really important. When it comes to how much fat you should have in your diet, it really depends on personal preference and if you're a competitive athlete or not. If you prefer more fat in your diet, it's fine to have a higher fat diet and you can still lose or maintain weight on a high fat diet as long as you adjust your calories accordingly. One thing to point out though is that very low fat diets can have side effects like a lack of energy, poor physical performance and a decrease in sex hormones which can even lead to a loss of libido or sex drive. Now nobody wants that so make sure your fat intake doesn't drop below 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day for an extended period which is more than a few weeks. As a rule of thumb just subtract 100 from your height in centimeters and that'll give you a good daily minimum fat intake in grams. So if you're say 180 centimeters tall, take 100 from that and that gives you 80 grams of fat per day as a rough minimum to aim for. Next up, carbohydrates or carbs. One gram of carbohydrates provides four calories of energy, meaning they have the same energy content as protein. Carbs, just like the other macronutrients, are made up of smaller molecules joined together. The basic units of carbs are monosaccharides or simple sugars, which join together to form disaccharides two simple sugars, or polysaccharides, which are multiple molecules of simple sugars. The three most common simple sugars are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Different combination of these sugars produce different polysaccharides. There is no minimum requirement for carbohydrates in your diet as they are not considered essential, but don't let that statement fool you. Just because something isn't essential doesn't mean that it doesn't have benefits. Think about whatever you're watching this video on, your phone or tablet or laptop. None of those are essential for your life, but I bet you can do a lot of cool things with them. Same goes for carbs. Primary function that carbohydrate has in the body is to act as an energy source, a role that can also be carried out by protein and fat, if necessary. However, if you don't have enough carbohydrate, high intensity exercise performance, such as weightlifting or endurance exercise, can take a dive. Virtually all competitive athletes benefit from having carbs in their diets, either around training times or for competitions. You can still perform well on lower carb diets, but carbs definitely give athletes the competitive edge. In fact, some athletes can have as many as 12 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight per day. For a 70 kilogram athlete, that's 840 grams of carbs daily or more. In terms of your own diet, I usually tell people to use the remainder of their calories after they've calculated protein and fat for their carb intake. Some people prefer more carbs and less fat. Some people prefer more fat and fewer carbs. Honestly, for most people, it doesn't matter. If you're a competitive athlete, don't skimp on the carbs though. Sources of simple sugars include fruits, table sugar, honey, juices, and you can get starch from cereals and cereal products, potatoes, bread, legumes like beans, peas, and starchy vegetables like pumpkins. At this point, I also want to mention fiber, which is technically a carb, but it's mostly indigestible by humans. That said, in the small intestine, our gut bacteria can ferment fiber and produce short chain fatty acids, which we can get some energy from. High fiber foods have been shown to have a multitude of health benefits, like improving blood sugar control, reducing our cholesterol levels, feeding our gut bacteria, keeping us feeling fuller for longer, and helping to keep us regular. Sources of fiber include whole grain cereals, legumes, fruit and vegetables. And for more information on the benefits of fiber, check out my fiber video here. Finally, I'm just going to mention alcohol, which has seven calories per gram, making it the second most calorie dense macro, next to fat. Besides being a source of energy, alcohol doesn't have any other health benefits. So I'm not going to say much more other than it shouldn't make up a very large part of your daily calorie intake. A great way to learn about the macro content of the foods you eat is to use a macro tracking app. It can help to teach you how much of each macronutrient you're currently eating and give you an idea of where you might be able to improve your diet. And if you want to learn how to alter your macros to help you with either your muscle gain or fat loss goals, check out my other videos on these topics. 
Another really great thing about understanding macros and what foods they come in is that it helps you to look at foods in a more neutral way. What I mean by that is that it's really easy for some foods to get a healthy or diet-friendly reputation and for them to be known as good foods, while other foods get the reputation of being bad foods. When you understand calories and macros and how they affect health, performance, and weight loss, you begin to understand that you can still include a lot of your favorite foods in your diet. It teaches you to think more critically of the food you eat instead of just accepting silly good or bad labels that the diet industry has put on food. That ability to think critically gives you a lot more freedom with the food you eat, and that's a really good thing for your mental health. So, did that clear everything up about macros? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.